would allow a, a detailed public discussion, you know, and evaluation of where all this was fully vetted uh, to make that decision to open this up in Jefferson County. And, uh, you know, I know it's opened up other places, and that other places are where you could have maybe pilot projects that you could look at and you'd have more information and say, okay, you do it, you do it this way, maybe it's okay. Uh, right now, we're making a lot of effort to restore the sandy here, and it's one of the places where you have a real chance of uh, protecting some things that are trashed other places already. And, uh, my sense is that we aren't so far apart, uh, but uh, I, I think I'm ready to go with the outright prohibition language that originally staff uh, suggested. So. I think it's, uh, <clears throat> as I count the votes, it looks like two to one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, what's the yeah, we haven't taken formal votes on any of this. We've done a real good job of working towards consensus, and I greatly appreciate it from both of you. Pre-voting poll. Yeah. <laughs> so. Can I bring up a few issues that concern me as the attorney? Um, sure. Page I have on page 828-28. Um, the bottom number eight is a 30 percent set aside for public access and open space, and that's that's. Um, that's, un that's not, that to me, that seems like it's an arbitrary number that doesn't, that's not going to satisfy the proportionality of the nexus requirements of cases like I I Isla Verde, which is I-S-L-A, Verde, B-E-R-D-E. Um, they, they had a 30% set aside the subdivision and it was struck down because they couldn't show why 30% satisfied, you know, did what it needed to do or, or supported, the, uh, supported the public parks, the access area that was needed by uh, I think it was the city of Camus, I don't remember. But anyway, so I'm just wondering where that 30% came from, and if that could just be written in a way um, to, to make it a shall, you can even change shall to should, and I think that would, you know, or something just, or drop the number, it should just be a, you know, it should be a number to serve the purpose. Because I guess I'm a little confused about that. It sounds like in number six, public access is required if you're doing a long plat. And then it says, number eight says, we're required for multi-lot residential development. In other words, it's going to be, if it's a long plot, you automatically have that condition imposed on you. And if you're a short plot, you wouldn't. So I, I just don't, I think that you, you are, you're basically saying, if you have more than five, four lots, give us 30% of your land. That would really have a problematic with, um, be problematic with a taking. You would need to just do something where it would be, you know, the appropriate level or that's something that's really, uh, that could be a that could be a real simple case for someone. Sure. David, so, with with the la in the last line there, um, uh, the requirement would be waived due to legal limitations. Would that solve the legal problem? Well, I mean, the whole thing is legally limited. Um, you can ask. You, I understand that public access is one of the preferred uses of the. It's a priority or whether the for the shoreline, but you can have public access, you just can't say it's going to be X percent. Mm -hmm. And you can't, there's, there's about a hundred different ways to get public access. I mean, you know, people should be creative in terms of how they can do that. So I would be concerned about having any kind of number in there. Mm -hmm. So that's, but yeah, so that's one thing I'm concerned with. Maybe that's better as a policy rather than part of the regulation. Yeah. And then another question I have is, um, on page 7-3, this is the rule about the 500 foot, um, 500 feet, you can't have a beach access structure if someone else has one within 500 feet. And I can just imagine neighbors really pissing at each other and Phil has one and Dave wants one, but Phil hates Dave and won't let Dave walk on his. Well, it reads public beach access, so it wouldn't be a private landowner beach access. It's only if there's public, if there's a public facility. Okay, well, I misread that. All right, number is this good? That was on page 7 3. It's line 34. This is allowing beach access structures, and in fact, the, the, the edit that was given by the board is that line 28 will read when allowed, private beach access structures may be located within the shoreline buffer, provided that 
one, two, and number three is there is no other available public beach access okay. within 500. So okay. if, you've got, if you've got a public facility nearby, then, then you just don't need for another one. Okay. Private. All right. Um, another question I had was um, page 9-2, lines 737 to 41. Again, I'm working off the August 20th version. Um, which is the DCD version. Yeah, right. Okay. Um, okay, so you have a bulkhead that's deteriorated such that the OHWM has been established by the presence and action of water landward of the bulkhead. Then the replacement bulkhead must be located at or near the actual OHWM. So who determines that? Ultimately, ecology. And this is an exemption straight out of the statute in the WAC. Okay. So we haven't crafted these. We've really just All right. copied them. And ordinary high water, by statute, is final decision as a college. But you guys can call it, and then they can dispute it. Is that what happens? Yeah, we'll make the call in the field. And if it's controversial, then we'll bring in a college. Okay. All right, on page 8-27, lines 21 to 23, how do we decide? How does... How does DCD plan to, plan to prove or disprove that there are adverse impacts on the aesthetics? Aesthetics are so personal. Well, I the rest could be measured, it seems to me. That one can't be. Well, that's again getting to the public access concept as an overarching goal of the of the statute and access includes visual as well as physical and the visual includes both looking from land out at the water and being on the water and looking back at the land. I think we'd really default more to SEPA and aesthetics is one of the areas within Aesthetics the is in SEPA? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, David, would aesthetics be something uh, uh, reasonable person and reasonable circumstances you could you could be using that as a as a guideline if somebody wants to paint all the trees on their property international distress orange <laughs> for example that might go against the common that might fail as, that might fail to see potential as a problem of significant adverse impact that they could mitigate or condition against yeah I think so I think SEPA would, right. would do that for you um, Okay, page 7-34.